Hi, Casey Glass for Worship Sense here today with a tutorial on recreating Ian McIntosh's uh, famous Verbi lead sound. So if you're not familiar, Ian is the keyboardist for uh, Bethel Music, or one of the keyboardists, and has been featured on many Jesus Culture albums. And uh, he recently did a tutorial on his YouTube channel and blog on a lead sound he likes to use that he calls the Verbi lead. Now, one of the things about Ian is he works almost entirely in Reason, and Reason is great, but if you're not using Reason, it can be hard to recreate some of his patches. So uh, the folks over on Hillsong Omnisphere Sounds kind of took on recreating this sound either in main stage or Omnisphere, and I think, quite frankly, you could do it with just about any synthesizer and reverb plugin of your choice. And so we're going to go here and uh, recreate it both in ES2, which is a stock synth in main stage, and then Omnisphere. Uh, a lot of thanks to Pete Welly, who first gave the seeds of uh, putting this uh, sound together. And again, what we're going for is something that sounds kind of like this. So it's kind of uh, a sound that has some pretty good overtones. It's a little bit uh, hollow in the middle. In my mind, whenever there's odd harmonics, it sounds just kind of hollow. And of course, tons of reverb. And then one of the things that's really particular about the sound is the portamento. So the way the notes kind of slide into each other there. And then uh, Ian talks about in the tutorial, which I encourage you to go watch, that he can kind of adjust the amount of resonance in the sound to kind of give it more shimmer. Like that's the resonance turned up pretty good. So we can drop it all the way out. And then he also mentioned kind of playing it in different registers to kind of add different kinds of textures to it. So, I mean, the sound itself is not really anything way out there, but again, one of the things about this blog is really kind of listening, learning how to put together sounds for yourself. So, when I first heard this, um, I kind of had an idea where to start. I have to admit that Pete's suggestion of kind of stacking square waves is the thing that really made me think we could get this done pretty quick. And so that's what I did. So let's go ahead. We're going to open up ES2, and I have actually the stock kind of main stage channel strip here. So we're going to go open ES2. And this, uh, when I open ES2, it always use, opens to the default, um, my default, which is just an empty, totally empty ES2 with just one oscillator turned on. Oh, great. Thanks, John. Um, and so uh, one of the things we need to do is just kind of put together our sounds. And oh, look, there's that too. So we're going to start with a square wave. And let me make sure that, yeah, that's all okay. All right. And again, square wave by itself is. Kind of bell toned, and actually, right here we have uh, pulse width, which is has more overtones, less of the fundamental. And in ES2, we have three oscillators, and then this is the mixer. So, wherever in the triangle we are, you know, it could be all at one, all at two, all at three, all of them equal, more towards two and three, more towards one and two, and so on. So, we're gonna, we're gonna put it right in the middle just so that we'll be able to hear everything as we go along. We want to make sure a couple things that it's set to poly so we can get chords. We want to, we don't need a lot of voices. I mean, and back in the day, you know, eight voice synth was a pretty common thing. We can set it to unison if we want to give a little bit thicker sound. And so we just have our one square wave going here. So now let's turn on oscillator number two. And we're going to make that another square wave really pulse width. We're going to make it kind of, uh, a shorter pulse, which is going to be on this end of the square wave. So we got a little bit of something going there. And then down here we'll maybe do another one. Now at the moment these are all exactly the same uh, pitch. So what we want to do is probably just detune these a little bit. We'll take the top one, we'll make it flat, we'll take the bottom one, make it just a little bit sharp. So now we have a little bit more phasing going on there. And if we wanted to really thicken it up, we could probably 
uh, drop one down an octave or an up an octave. Well, I only know that we need to do that right now. And then another thing about this song, of course, is the glide. And so glide or portamento is that sliding into the note. So if we crank it up. So that's kind of pretty glidey. And then, let's see. So we've got the slide, but you can hear that it kind of, that attack is a little abrupt. It actually kind of clicks in. So in ES2, envelope number three controls are amplitude or the, the change in volume over time. And so you want the sound of, to fade in quickly, but not instantly. So you can see that just 10 milliseconds is enough to take away that click of the attack. And then we're going to have the uh, sustain, full up, the release is shortish, so that that's pretty good. So our sound sounds pretty good. Again, just to show you the changes, if we took our release up long, when I release the keys, the sound just keeps on going forever and ever. So we don't necessarily want that because we're going to have a lot of reverb and that's going to kind of lengthen the sound out for us. And then if we had our sustain other than full on, what we would hear is the sound get louder and then quieter. So that little peak at the beginning. So we're going to keep our sustain up. It just effectively makes the decay slider not do anything. All right. So we've got a pretty decent starting sound there. So let's go ahead and we're going to work entirely with uh, filter number two, which is a variety of low pass filters. We're going to turn on the fat and make it 24 decibels per octave so it cuts off pretty good. And that might be a little too low. There we go. So it's not ear piercing. And then we'll turn the resonance up. We turn the resonance way up. It's going to kind of hurt a little bit. So we want it to be kind of. Maybe a quarter of the way up. All right. So now we have that. And if we want to create some modulation routings, we can do a couple of things. Uh, one thing that we probably might want to do is go ahead and make the mod wheel affect the cutoff of filter number two. And we'll turn that up quite a bit. And then we can turn the cutoff down. And then as we play, we can open the filter up with the mod wheel, which is what I'm doing right now. Okay. And we'll want to have it at it starting position a little bit. There we go. And then we might want to, you know, route some other controller to resonance in case you don't have, you know, an easy way to map that. So uh, we've got a couple of options in here. Uh, you know, aftertouch might be an interesting thing to route to that. Uh, but you can do that if you want to. And I would encourage you to play with this stuff. So like maybe actual square wave sounds better. And actually ES2 has wavetables as well. Each of the oscillators can have a wave out of its wavetable. You get to that by right clicking on where it says sign and then we can go like maybe this is good. Actually my favorite when I tried this was mean. Like mean too is good. Because one thing about Ian Synth it has kind of uh, not a lot of mid range. Like in the 200 to 400 hertz range, it's kind of empty in there. It's kind of a high and low sound, and the middle is scooped out a little bit. And these square waves don't quite do that. So that mean too kind of does it. And then we've talked before about just kind of, you know. Mixing in some of the other stuff to 
fill it out. If we want, if we did more sine wave, we would just bring some more tone to it. I don't like that. So, but we could add a little phaser. Uh, there's basically an EQ slider right here that we could cut, lop out some high end if we want. And I think that's a pretty good start. Let's see. We might be able to take this a little bit, make it a little bit more. So, we have the raw tone. The next thing we need to do is to give us some reverb. So this is our basic ES2 synth. We're obviously not there yet. So we're gonna throw in here, silver verb. Uh, you're happy or welcome to use whichever reverb you prefer. And obviously this sound is super reverb heavy, so we're gonna crank up the reverb. wet to dry mix and uh, I'm gonna say no pre-delay we're just gonna try to make this all verby and we're gonna bump these up to about medium and we can maybe want to keep some of the low end in there we can fix that up all righty and so that's kind of you know now I have to admit that on the tracks that Ian played, I felt like there was probably some delay in there too. And so we could certainly do that. I would probably put this, probably move this above the silver verb. And give you a little cross feed. A little bit more. So that is pretty close. You guys certainly please uh, work with that and see what you get. Perhaps we'll get something a little bit closer. And then in part two, we'll go ahead and make this same or similar patch using entirely Omnisphere. Uh, so please take a look at that as well. Thanks. This is Casey Glass.